Hello, this is Dr. Michael Greger coming to you. Uh, did it just go live? Hello, this is Dr. Michael Greger coming to you live from my treadmill, as I do every month to answer any questions you may have um, about health or nutrition. Um, you can see I'm in a, a, a different background here. This is not some like fake zoomy background, but indeed I am uh, quarantining in California and uh, apologize for the crappy treadmill sound in the background. Had to get like some low budget treadmill to keep me, uh, keep me uh, in business um, uh, for a few weeks here. But um, for those of you unfamiliar with my work every year, I read every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. So busy folks like you don't have to. Then compile the most interesting, most groundbreaking, most practical findings and new videos and articles I upload nearly every day to my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, strictly non-commercial, not selling anything, just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition. She inspired me to do the work I do today. Let us get to your questions. Matt W. says... SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, please. I've got a whole series of videos coming up on SIBO. Stay tuned. Elena Babiakova says, hello, how not to diet? I recommend walling off your calories. Very important. But can that perhaps limit not only the absorption of fats, but also the absorption of minerals and vitamins? Well, if you're eating... A foods with plant walls, what are you eating? You're eating whole plant foods, and the last thing you need to worry about is uh, not getting enough um, uh, vitamins and minerals if you're eating the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet, with the exception of vitamin D, sunshine vitamin, which you get from walking outside at this beautiful time of the year, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, um, and vitamin B12, um, uh, which is critically important, and have a webinar. Um, uh, tomorrow on B12, but the registration deadline is passed. But for those of you who registered, I will see you tomorrow. That should be a lot of fun. Anyway, and all, of course, the videos are on B12 will be up free, nutritionfacts.org. If you didn't register, you'll still be able to get it. Oh, um, I think we'll actually do it on a, like a, a audio, like a download kind of thing, a video download that you can also uh, check out if indeed you miss tomorrow, whether or not you registered. All right, Elizabeth H. says, Dr. Greger, I have Oh, you have changed, meaning I have changed their family's life. Shout out to my friend Courtney. Shh, hello, Courtney, who recently discovered you. Is the natural occurring alcohol and kombucha as harmful as regular alcohol? Absolutely. Alcohol is alcohol. Um, and it forms a carcinogen called acetaldehyde. Um, and uh, that's bad. Um, so it's a known human carcinogen. So, uh, but there's other reasons not to drink kombucha. Check out my video on kombucha, which is like ages old. And in fact, I get a lot of kombucha questions. So I did a new video on kombucha. Um, it's coming out soon. All the new research and guess what? Still bad. That's my little spoiler alert, sneak preview. Still bad, but you have to wait for the video for details. Ian Chabot says, any science on mast cell activation syndrome? Let me do um, uh, uh, formerly vegan friends seem to have histamine overreactions. I eat anything, maybe if eats anything, but berries and bear meat. Um, fasting, fecal transplant, what should we do? I know of no data on uh, mast cell disorders, on this histamine reaction disorders and diet. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's just something I, I may not have stumbled across because it's not something that I looked into Personally, oh, hello, Melly Bear. Do you want to say hi to Melly? Hello, Mellers. Oh, Joe, baby. Hi, Joe, baby. Oh, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Oh, baby. Okay. All right. Mommy is coming to rescue um, uh, um, uh, the little piglet. Okay. Um, uh, where was I? Oh, mast cells. Yes. So, look, there may be great research out there. It's not something I've actively searched for. Um, so what I would encourage you to do, go to PubMed. Um, used to be PubMed.gov, but I think they changed the URL. They just updated their site. But just uh, Google PubMed, P-U-B, um, as in boy, M-E-D, as in dog. Um, and 
That's the database of National Library of Medicine, largest medical library in the world. And you type in uh, mast cell and diet, uh, for example, and see what comes up. And something juicy uh, comes up, whether it's a paywall or not, just let me know about it. And I will uh, do a deep dive and see if there's anything we can do to help your friend. Okay, Marie says, if the coronavirus, say, wait a second, coronavirus? I thought I was a nutrition person. What do I know about coronavirus? I just wrote a book, How to Survive a Pandemic, based on all my infectious disease background. That's actually how I spent the first half of my professional life. Um, available now, audiobook, ebook, all proceeds to charity, and then uh, physical copies coming out in August. Check it out. But anyway, the question for Marie is, if the coronavirus can enter the eyes, then why is there little or no public health messaging about protection, such as um, uh, there is you for using masks? Okay, we are not sure whether or not um, we can get a sufficient infectious dose in the eyes to actually infect people. There is a conduit between the eyes and the lungs. It's called the nasolacrimal duct. Um, that's why your nose gets stuffy when you cry, because tears actually go through this little canal that burrows through your nasal bone. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and into your nose and then into the back of your throat. So stuff, so you can get infected, for example, with polio, all sorts of things through your eye. But, um, uh, but, uh, uh, but we don't know. I mean, we don't know if, uh, if uh, such cases exist. We do know um, there is some SARS data based on those who did and did not use eye protection, but we don't have SARS-CoV-2, which is what's causing the uh, current pandemic. Um, there is certainly recommendations for healthcare workers, those that come in contact on the front line with people who are hacking with the virus, very high risk contacts, and they are indeed wearing eye protection. So, uh, you know, goggles over their eyes um, uh, without vents to make sure, um, because we are concerned about that route. Um, but, um, uh, but, uh, the primary route of transmission, which is why they're telling people to wear masks and face coverings, is through um, respiratory droplets, um, which indeed could land on your eye, but at a high enough dose to actually infect your lungs, we don't know. But we do know um, that, um, that if we breathe in enough, we can, uh, we can get it. So that's why emphasis is on masks. But if you are um, taking care of somebody, if you're forced to take care of somebody with this disease, they should be wearing a mask. You should be wearing a mask. And if you have eye protection, would not be a bad idea. In, in, in addition to ventilation, air filtration, uh, get the bathroom fan going, all sorts of things you can do. And I have a video coming out on that. Of course, a whole section in the book on it. All right. Dan Fors says, I make a large smoothie every morning full Fruits, veggies, seeds, spices, mostly whole foods with some powders, amla. Um, uh, that's a whole food. Um, just taking some water out, cinnamon. That's a whole bark um, matcha. That's a whole food. That's just green tea leaves powdered. Um, uh, vegan protein. Now, that is a powder. That is uh, something. Is it okay for my liver and kidneys? Well, why would you have protein powder? Um, uh, uh, I think uh, the biggest problem we face is actually getting too much protein, not too little. Um, uh, but um, um, uh, I would just encourage you to sip that smoothly at the rate at which you would eat those foods, that large amount of food. Um, uh, but other than that, sounds delicious. Um, invite me over and we can slurp together. Marie says, are antioxidants interchangeable? Or must one eat all the antioxidants every day for good health? Well, um, in terms of, there's an interchangeability in terms of um, what's, what's called TAC, total antioxidant content of the bloodstream. So if you eat different foods, um, you can measure the, uh, the kind of the balance between free radicals and antioxidants in your bloodstream, uh, depending on what's absorbed um, through the gut wall. And in that case, you can maintain this kind of so-called redox balance with any of the antioxidants out there, um, but that's not all these antioxidant compounds can do. These uh, predominantly like polyphenols, uh, the one class of phytonutrients, which has been targeted as um, likely producing many of the benefits uh, that uh, fruit and vegetable consumption is associated with. They don't, they're not just antioxidants, they have all sorts of other 
um, uh, um, uh, roles within the body like feeding your good gut flora. Your bacteria can eat these polyphenols, produce all sorts of wonderful byproducts that then get absorbed into your system and circulate throughout your body. So that's why I encourage people to eat a wide variety, a diversity of, uh, of whole plant foods um, uh, to uh, get as many of these phytonutrients as possible. Eat the rainbow is what I'm saying. Car 391262, not to be confused. Well, I'm sorry, KS 391262, not to be confused with KS 391263, says, Any advice for someone with interstitial cystitis? Do I have any videos? Um, so uh, I would not do caffeine. Um, uh, uh, try cutting out caffeine. Anything else? Um, well, so uh, first of all, of course, you want to be there. There are interstitial cystitis symptoms that can actually mimic other um, conditions that you can do things, do um, uh, things about. Um, so I assume that you've actually been diagnosed with interstitial cystitis and not just kind of diagnosed yourself on the Internet. If you have, you should actually go um, to urologist and get uh, um, and figure that out. Um, but in terms of diet. Um, uh, I would have to look. So uh, that's a, another good PubMed thing. But um, uh, I know, well, I know. So caffeine consumption is associated with urinary incontinence. Um, but whether or not it, uh, so I, I'm, I'm, for some reason, when I when I heard interstitial cystitis, I was thinking uh, um, uh, caffeine. But I want to make sure I'm not confusing the two. So well, let's look that up and not take my word for it. But uh, that may be one option. It's the kind of thing we can try for a few days, see if it helps. Okay. Um, Radoy Mohammed says, is this a free live Q&A? What? You didn't pay? Of course, it's free. All my Q&As are free. Everything I do um, uh, uh, has, is, is free or donation only, and then everything's free afterwards. All right. Okay. Um, Engel G8082 says, are mushrooms in powdered form just as healthy? Uh, sure. What I wouldn't do is those chaga mushrooms, C-H-A-G-A, -A, too high in oxalates for comfort. But uh, sure, uh, powdered mushrooms. Uh, uh, we'll have what we're concerned, what we want to get from powdered mushrooms with a special type of fiber, these beta-glucans which have immune boosting effects. That's why if you randomize people to eat a cup of mushrooms, just plain white button mushrooms every day, um, you can cut down on, you can have two, two uh, you can actually cut down on um, inflammation like people with uh, seasonal allergies. Um, but at the same time, um, you, can boo you can decrease um, uh, upper, upper respiratory tract infection symptoms. So it seems to have the best of both worlds boosting the part of the immune system that protects you from infection, but uh, tamping down the kind of pro-inflammatory arm of the immune system. Okay. Um, Laura Henderson says, my husband is using tea tree oil topically for itchy skin due to all the extra showering as an essential worker. Um, uh, is that safe? I have videos on tea tree oil. Um, check it out. Just write tea tree oil in. Um, and I know uh, it's... Um, used topically for nail fungus, like toenail fungus. I know I have a video on that, but just check the video to make sure I don't have any precautions about applying it directly on the skin. Um, I don't remember. Okay, MF says that they love me. That's very sweet. How afraid should we be of COVID with mild asthma? Well, last time I checked, asthma was surprisingly not um, a risk factor. It's commonly lumped in as a risk factor because it's assumed it's a risk factor. But when I looked at the data, the data just simply wasn't there suggesting those um, with asthma are at higher risk. Um, and uh, so I would uh, not consider myself to be in a high risk category with a mild asthma. Um, uh, and if anyone knows differently, maybe there's new data out. Um, uh, uh, since I last did my I mean, there are 800 articles every day published in the peer-reviewed uh, scientific literature. If you set up a, a PubMed alert um, for, uh, for the coronavirus, you will get 
a list of 800 new articles every single day. That's not even including preprints, just what's been published. And so it's a full-time job to stay on top of it. But I did that every single day for months um, before I uh, wrote the book and even after I wrote the book. Um, so I have a pretty good sense of where the science was, but it's possible there's um, some new research. But at the time, asthma was not considered, uh, well, it was considered a risk factor, but the data did not bear that out. Okay. Um, Reni Hajiva says, why is alternate day fasting bad? Many ancient civilizations fasted. Oh, many ancient civilizations did all sorts of stuff. Doesn't mean just that it's good um, or it's good for you. So why is alternate day fasting bad? Because um, in the longest, largest study to date, um, it may have actually only been done on women, um, but the largest, um, longest study to date found that alternate day fasting significantly increases increased cholesterol over LDL cholesterol, which is a key risk factor for heart disease, number one killer of men and women, um, uh, and uh, compared to the same amount of caloric restriction from chronic um, uh, uh, caloric restriction. So same amount of cut, same number of calories, but there was something about not eating every other day that uh, must have screwed the liver up such that they did not clear cholesterol out of your body fast enough. And so we do not want to be doing anything that increases our cholesterol levels. Okay. Amit Gabe says ancient civilizations, oh, ancient civilizations aren't exactly exemplars of health, I believe. It's just responding to Rennie. Okay. Um, but Rennie is back saying any specific foods to avoid if you have eczema. Uh, well, um, uh, but oh, like whole plant food. So I do have a bunch of videos on eczema, um, uh, uh, but it may be called topical um, uh, atopic dermatitis, excuse me, atopic dermatitis. So if you type in eczema and nothing comes up on nutritionfacts.org, I think it should, but I would put it atopic dermatitis, the same thing, just kind of the sciencey way of saying it. Um, and I do have a bunch of videos on that. But in terms of whole plant foods to avoid, I don't think there were any. I think it was just um, eating more, not less, plant foods. Isn't that so often the case? All right. Janique Lemontania um, says, my wife was diagnosed, ugh, stage three, triple negative breast cancer, um, which is better fighting the disease? Broccoli microgreens, oh, or broccoli sprouts, other recommendations. Hmm. Okay. Um, so I have this remarkable video talking about um, um, uh, talking about the use of broccoli sprouts. I believe it was three quarters of a cup a day. Um, uh, um, and uh, now, uh, so broccoli microgreens um, should actually be probably pretty similar. So broccoli microgreens are basically just kind of matured sprouts. And I would assume that it would have the same kind of concentration of sulforaphane, which is presumably what we're looking for compared to mature broccoli. But I would have to, uh, I, I would look that up um, to make sure the sulforaphane content. So right now I'd stick to broccoli sprouts, is which we have the data over, um, but it's quite possible that the microgreens would have enough. So basically it's the, it's the bite, it gives it that bitter flavor. And when you eat broccoli sprouts, oh, you know you're eating broccoli sprouts, right? Really sharp, spicy, right? Um, so that's why I typically mix it in a salad. It's the only way most people can eat it. Um, so if you eat the microgreens, so this is a way to test for sulforaphane without a laboratory. If you eat the microgreens, if you eat some broccoli sprouts, and you're like, oh, and then you eat some microgreens, and you're like, oh, at the same level. It's the same bitter spiciness, presumably has the same amount. But if you're eating the microgreens, like, oh, such a nice mild flavor. Oh, that's probably not a good thing in terms of sulforaphane content. Um, and you don't want to mess around. Um, uh, and are there other things one can do in terms of breast cancer survival, uh, not just prevention? Flaxseed, soy, I have a bunch of list of foods. Um, and just type in breastcancernutritionfacts.org in addition to whatever um, your physician is recommending for treatment. Kathy E. says, cyanotoxins and blue-green algae. Please talk about that. Blue-green algae added to many things, including supplements. Is it safe? No, it's not safe. How is this additive different or the same as lake water? Safe to swim. Safe to, maybe safe to swim, but you don't want to drink lake water uh, necessarily. Um, uh, um, so uh, 
Uh, yeah, so uh, blue green algae um, uh, makes these, uh, and it's sporadic, unfortunately. So there's this blue green algae that can make toxins, but they don't do it all the time. And so you could have a, a, a supplement company saying, we've tested our blue green algae uh, supplements and there's no, uh, there, uh, there's no toxins been found. Okay, no toxins then, but those same blue green algae that you harvest later, the next batch, they could decide to be making this toxin. They typically do it under environmental stresses. It's forget exactly why these toxins are made. Um, and so, uh, so that's why you should just stay away, uh, stay away from it. Um, and so stay away from supplements that have it. Um, and uh, there are certain toxic algaes um, uh, uh, that, that, that you wouldn't want to swim in, but typically pond scum is perfectly harmless but I would not eat it. I mean, part, uh, perfectly harmless to swim amongst, um, but uh, yeah, wouldn't eat it. Okay, Rennie is back saying, so practically, da, 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 da. oh, oh, okay. So Rennie's saying, so practicing daily intermittent fasting is okay, but not alternate day fasting. Well, if it's daily, it's not really intermittent fasting. I think what you're talking about is time-restricted feeding. So trying to narrow your daily feeding window to um, 12 hours or less, um, uh, that is something I recommend, but it's critically important when that window is. When do we want it? Early. When do we want it now? No. When do we want it? Early in the day. So uh, if anything, we skip supper, not breakfast. We try to shift our uh, eating window earlier in the day um, and uh, weigh our calories earlier as well. Uh, so yeah, time restricted feeding is fine. Something that I've incorporated in my own life um, after writing the book, How Not to Diet, where I... Uh, Probably the biggest chapter in the entire book is on fasting and all the various variations. Amy Sofer says, is it true that vegans have more strokes? Ah, but are there some helpful ways to prevent it? Okay. Um, it is true that vegans and vegetarians combined have more strokes, um, uh, um, but significant, so much less heart disease are actually... I'm less likely to have cardiovascular disease overall, but who cares? Why are we having more strokes? I did a whole webinar on it, um, and uh, that's available. Go to nutritionfacts.org. You can check it out. Um, and uh, bottom line is, oh, is the topic of my webinar tomorrow. In fact, in that webinar, my Why Do Vegetarians Have More Stroke webinar, uh, which went on for hours and went through all the different theories and finally arrived at what's finally doing it. I said, and it, it has to do with, um, inadequate vitamin B12 consumption, something called homocysteine, and I promised a whole B12 webinar. What's the best type? How much to take? Blah, blah, blah. My new recommendations, what we do for kids, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and that's tomorrow. Tomorrow is my webinar on B12. If you did not register, it is too late. Um, if you did register, I'll see you tomorrow. If you didn't register, or if you registered, but all of a sudden can't make it, don't worry. It'll all be available free um, eventually on Nutrition Facts, or um, um, you can make a donation and download the whole thing if you missed it. Um, all right. So anyway, so you can check that out. Okay. Good question. Sheree or Sherry Gold says, hi, is it possible for neuropathy to be totally eradicated um, uh, um, with uh, diabetes? Okay. So there's lots of different types of neuropathy. So there are two conflicting studies. One study that found that indeed a whole food plant-based diet, remarkably effective in dramatically um, improving painful diabetic neuropathy. Um, but a follow-up study did not find the same remarkable effect. What's the downside? But look, the, um, uh, uh, what's the leading killer of diabetics? Heart disease. So obviously you want to eat a heart-healthy diet and also um, can help control or even reverse type 2 diabetes, get rid of it in the first place. Um, and so obviously that's the healthiest diet and it may indeed help um, with neuropathy as well, as well as retinopathy. In fact, there were remarkable reversals of retinopathy proven back in the 50s at Duke from Kempner. Remarkable stuff. Anyway, okay, so yes, eat healthy. Um, uh, Rennie says, what are my thoughts on ex-vegan YouTubers? Uh, that's not something I follow. In fact, yeah, if people ask me about like stuff that happened in the media or stuff that happened online. Unfortunately, my nose is buried in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. Um, there's already, I'm already overwhelmed with uh, this bounty 
of, uh, of peer-reviewed research don't have time for other stuff. I will leave that to, um, to uh, other people to figure out. And I'll just deal with the science. Kathy, Kathy E. says, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Please talk about the safety of carrageenan. Ah, it's added to a whole bunch of stuff. I have a video on the safety of carrageenan. Basically, I concluded, if I remember correctly, that those who have uh, like inflammatory bowel issues may want to avoid it. Um, and I go through my whole thinking, talk about all the body of evidence. And that actually led, and I actually, an employee told me, to the Silk Soy Milk Company replacing carrageenan. They credit my video for replacing carrageenan with locust bean. No, locust bean gum is carrageenan. They replaced it with gel and gum or some other kind of non-carrageenan uh, thickener. Um, and uh, basically I was like, well, that's not what I said in the video. I didn't say it was bad for everybody, um, but there are certain populations where there's concerning data and we don't even know um, in that case, but it was enough that they decided might as well go with something else. So, um, but uh, yeah, so check out my carrying video and make up your own mind based on the science. Okay. Rennie says, what do I, what do I eat in a day? Um, uh, it would be fun to watch um, uh, if I did another cooking video. Uh, what do I eat in the day? I've got an app for that. It's called Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen. There's uh, um, all the things I try to um, fit into my daily routine. Available free as an app for iPhone, Android. I just click on through it. But exactly, how do I make what I make? Um, one of these days, maybe I will do a video. Right now, I'm kind of in... in uh, uh, in flux in terms of my location. Um, I'm, uh, but uh, once I get settled, maybe we will do a day in the life of and go, how do I combine all these daily dozen foods into delicious, scrumptious, super healthy, wonderful meals? Stay tuned. Okay. Um, Adam M. McGuck says, have I looked into xylitol sweetener? Yes, indeed. I have reported benefits for preventing cavities. Um, oh, so I certainly looked into xylitol in terms of, uh, of its use in like uh, little candies and, and chewing gum uh, in terms of its laxative effects. So you type in xylitol and nutrition facts, that'll pop up. Uh, but in terms of preventing cavities, the most important thing we do to prevent cavities is avoid added sugars, also known as free sugars. Also, uh, yeah, so yeah, so sugars that are not enwrapped in, encased in, uh, uh, in cell walls. In other words, from whole intact plant foods. That's how we prevent calories, cavities, since that is the um, uh, um, one and only um, uh, 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 causal um, sufficient cause for uh, dental caries or cavities. Misty Goldstone says, if vegetables such as broccoli or arugula start to turn yellow, are they still nutritious to eat? Thanks a lot. I would um, pull out, I would uh, uh, cut off those yellow bits um, and I would pick out those yellow leaves of arugula and would not eat them. Tonya Rothy says, is flaxseed oil the same, better, worse than ground flaxseed? Come on. Is a processed food um, a better? No, it is not better at all. In fact, um, it's so vulnerable to oxidation that it goes bad very quickly. Whereas ground flax seeds, you can sit in an airtight container on your shelf, not even refrigerated for months without going rancid um, because it has all those antioxidants, all the other wonderful things that you lose when you um, just pull out the oil. Yes, there's still omega-3s, but you're missing the lignans. You're missing the anti-cancer fighting compounds. Omega-3s are not the only reason why I recommend flax seeds. Primarily, it's because the anti-cancer benefits, which you lose when you go with the... Um, flaxseed oil, and you say, wait a second, I get flaxseed oil with, this says it's high lignan flaxseed oil. You know what it is? Look at the ingredients. It's the flaxseed oil with a little ground flaxseed sprinkled in so they could say it has some lignans. No, just get all the lignans by eating just the ground flaxseed. That's the way to do it. And I am out of time. Got another video, excuse me, another interview coming up, but I um, hope everyone is staying safe and having a wonderful month.